Self-improvement is masturbation. Imagine spending years on self-improvement only to realize you might be sabotaging your happiness. Surprising, right? This video dives deep into why the pursuit of self-improvement might actually be hindering your progress and how Stoic wisdom offers a profound alternative. By the end, you'll learn why self-improvement may be ruining your life. Understand how to harness ancient Stoic principles to achieve true contentment, improve your relationships, and find peace in the present moment. Chapter 1. The Self-Improvement Trap In today's relentless quest for self-improvement, we're bombarded with messages that tell us we're just one step away from our best selves. Yet the more we chase after this ideal, the more it seems to slip through our fingers. This paradox, where our pursuit of betterment leads to increased dissatisfaction, is a modern epidemic. But what if the problem isn't with us, but with the very concept of relentless self-improvement? The ancient Stoics had a term for this endless pursuit of external goods and pleasures, a futile attempt to fill an insatiable void. Seneca, a Roman Stoic philosopher, warns us, we are not satisfied with what we have, but desire what we do not have. Yet, once obtained, we desire even more. He's pointing out the vicious cycle of hedonic adaptation, our tendency to quickly return to a baseline level of happiness, no matter what highs or lows we experience. Now, consider this. How often have you achieved a goal only to find the satisfaction fleeting? Perhaps it was a promotion, a new car, or even a personal milestone. The excitement wears off, and soon you're on to the next thing. This endless cycle is the self-improvement trap. Stoicism offers a way out by shifting our focus from external achievements to internal virtue. The development of character, wisdom, and acceptance of what we cannot change. To apply this stoic wisdom in your life, start by reflecting on your motivations. Are they driven by external validations or a genuine desire for personal growth? Practice gratitude for what you currently have, not just for what you aspire to obtain. This shift in perspective isn't just philosophical, it's practical. It roots your happiness in something stable and within your control. As we delve deeper into Stoicism in the myth of perpetual growth, we'll uncover how society's obsession with endless growth is not only unsustainable, but fundamentally flawed. This next chapter challenges the very foundation of modern self-improvement and invites us to a richer, more fulfilling life. Stay tuned as we explore how embracing Stoic principles can liberate us from the trap of perpetual dissatisfaction and lead us to true contentment. Chapter 2. The Myth of Perpetual Growth In a world that celebrates constant achievement and accumulation, Stoicism presents a starkly different view. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants, Epictetus tells us. This ancient wisdom challenges the very foundation of what modern society deems success. The myth of perpetual growth, the belief that more is always better, whether it's in our bank accounts, our personal achievements, or even our quest for personal growth, is deeply flawed. The Stoics argue that this relentless pursuit can lead us away from true contentment. Instead of chasing after endless growth, they suggest a radical idea. Find richness in simplicity and value in sufficiency. This doesn't mean ambition or improvement is wrong, but when our self-worth is tied to constantly achieving more, we set ourselves up for perpetual dissatisfaction. Consider your own life. How often have you achieved a goal only to find the satisfaction fleeting, immediately replaced by the desire for something more? This is a common experience and it's exacerbated by a culture that often equates success with material wealth and professional achievements. The Stoic approach invites us to redefine growth. It's not about acquiring more, but about becoming more, 
more resilient, more virtuous, more content with what we have. This shift in perspective can liberate us from the hamster wheel of perpetual achievement and lead us to a deeper, more meaningful form of happiness. This stoic wisdom invites us to consider the impact of our pursuit of growth on our well-being and the world around us. It asks us to reflect on the sustainability of our actions and the true source of our happiness. Are we seeking growth in ways that nourish our soul and contribute positively to our community? Or are we trapped in a cycle of wanting that never truly satisfies? Let's dive even deeper into the controversial but liberating stoic exercises you're not ready for. These practices, though seemingly counterintuitive, hold the key to transforming our relationship with ourselves and the world around us. Chapter 3. Controversial Stoic Exercises Embarking on a Stoic journey requires us to confront practices that might seem counterintuitive at first. Stoicism introduces exercises like voluntary discomfort and the contemplation of mortality, known as memento mori. These practices, though initially appearing extreme, are designed to fortify our mental resilience and shift our perspective on life's true necessities. Consider the practice of voluntary discomfort. Epictetus advises, set yourself tasks slightly beyond what you think you can achieve. This could mean taking cold showers, fasting for a day, or limiting your use of technology. Such exercises are not punishments, but tools to appreciate what you have and prepare for unexpected hardships. By voluntarily placing ourselves in uncomfortable situations, we learn that we can endure much more than we think and that our happiness is not dependent on external comforts. Now, let's talk about memento mori, the contemplation of mortality. Marcus Aurelius wrote, you could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. This reflection is not morbid, but a powerful reminder to live our lives fully and meaningfully, knowing that our time is limited. But why do these exercises provoke such strong reactions? It's because they strike at the heart of our comfort-driven culture, proposing that true strength and happiness come not from avoiding discomfort, but from embracing it as a part of the human experience. This stoic approach encourages us to question our assumptions about what it means to live a good life and to consider whether our aversion to discomfort might actually be holding us back from reaching our full potential. To apply these practices, start small. Choose one day a week to practice voluntary discomfort. Reflect on your mortality each morning reminding yourself to live this day as if it were your last. These exercises will bring a newfound appreciation for your life and a deeper resilience against adversity. But Stoicism doesn't stop at building personal resilience. In our next lesson, Emotions and Relationships, the Stoic perspective that will challenge you, We'll dive into how Stoicism teaches us to navigate our emotions and relationships with wisdom and grace. Prepare to challenge everything you know about dealing with your feelings and connecting with others. If you've made it this far, I ask that you leave a comment to show that you're truly seeking change. Go ahead, leave a like, and subscribe for more content like this. Now, let's continue. Chapter 4 Emotions and Relationships Stoicism offers a perspective on emotions and relationships that might seem at odds with today's prevailing advice. The Stoics advocate for apathia, or freedom from the tyranny of uncontrolled emotions, not to be confused with apathy. Instead, it's about experiencing emotions responsibly, ensuring they don't overrun our reason and lead us to poor decisions. Epictetus famously said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This highlights the Stoic belief that our control lies not in external events or the actions of others, but in our own responses. When it comes to relationships, 
This means focusing on our own behavior, practicing forgiveness, and maintaining tranquility, even in the face of others' turmoil. Consider a common scenario, a disagreement with a close friend. Instead of reacting impulsively or with anger, a stoic approach would involve stepping back, recognizing the impermanence of the situation, and choosing a response that aligns with your values and maintains the relationship's integrity. Reflecting on this stoic approach, we're encouraged to examine our own emotional reactions and the foundations of our relationships. Are they built on the external validation and fleeting passions that the Stoics caution against? Or do they reflect a deeper, more Stoic understanding of love and friendship as expressions of our shared humanity and individual virtues? It's important to remember that these teachings are not about suppressing our emotions, but about understanding and directing them towards constructive ends. This perspective offers a powerful framework for cultivating relationships that are not only more resilient in the face of life's challenges, but also more fulfilling and aligned with our deepest values. Next, we'll explore how Stoicism redefines success and failure. Prepare to challenge your preconceptions and discover a path to true achievement and personal growth that defies conventional wisdom. Chapter 5 success and failure. Redefined, Stoicism invites us to radically rethink our approach to success and failure, turning societal norms on their head. In the eyes of a Stoic, true success is found not in accolades or achievements, but in living according to virtue and reason. Seneca tells us, a brave man is clear in his discourse and keeps close to truth. This implies that honesty, integrity and courage in our actions and words are the real measures of success. The Stoic approach to failure is equally provocative. Instead of viewing setbacks as purely negative, Stoics see them as opportunities for growth and learning. Marcus Aurelius wrote, The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. This perspective encourages us to embrace challenges, understanding that overcoming obstacles helps us develop resilience and wisdom. Reflecting on this stoic viewpoint encourages us to reassess our own definitions of success and failure. It prompts us to question, are we pursuing goals that truly align with our values and contribute to our growth as individuals, or are we chasing after societal validations that, in the end, hold little real value? This introspection can lead to a profound transformation in how we approach our goals and define our achievements. Ask yourself, how often are they influenced by external standards or the opinions of others? Consider a recent setback you experienced. Instead of dwelling on it as a failure, can you identify what it taught you? This shift in perspective can transform your approach to life's challenges, leading to a more fulfilling and meaningful existence. As we continue to navigate the complexities of modern life, our next lesson, The Stoic Path to Peace in a Hyper-Competitive World, will delve into how Stoicism equips us to find serenity amid the relentless pursuit of more. Discover how to apply Stoic principles to achieve a balanced, peaceful life in today's fast-paced world. Chapter 6. Peace in a Hyper-Competitive World In our hyper-competitive society, where success is often measured by accumulation and achievements, Stoicism offers a tranquil harbor. It teaches us that true peace comes not from surpassing others, but from refining ourselves and our perceptions, as Marcus Aurelius reminds us, he who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe. The Stoic principle of focusing on what is within our control, our thoughts, our actions and our responses frees us from the unnecessary stress of trying to control the uncontrollable. This doesn't mean withdrawing from life's challenges or competitions, but engaging with them more wisely with a focus on personal integrity and effort, 
rather than external outcomes. Imagine applying this in your professional life. Instead of stressing over a promotion, concentrate on doing your work to the best of your ability, learning from feedback and helping your colleagues. This shift in focus aligns with stoic principles and leads to a more satisfying and productive work life, irrespective of the outcome. This stoic inquiry into the nature of our ambitions and the peace that comes from focusing on what's truly within our control encourages us to re-evaluate our priorities. It asks us to consider whether our relentless striving for more is a path to genuine fulfillment or a diversion from the profound joy and serenity that come from living in harmony with our own nature and the world around us. By adopting a stoic mindset, we learn to appreciate the present moment and find contentment in our current circumstances. This approach not only fosters peace within ourselves, but also promotes a more compassionate and cooperative way of interacting with others, challenging the competitive ethos that often dominates our personal and professional lives. Next, we approach our final lesson, redefining happiness, stoicism versus modern myths. As we prepare to conclude our journey, get ready to challenge the very foundation of what society tells us happiness is and discover the stoic path to a contented, fulfilling life. Chapter 7 – Redefining Happiness In our final lesson, we confront the ultimate question, what is happiness? Modern culture often equates happiness with external achievements, wealth, beauty and fame. Stoicism, however, offers a radically different view. As Epictetus stated, Happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control, and some things are not. True happiness, according to Stoicism, comes from within, from living a life in accordance with nature and reason. This means prioritizing virtues like wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. It's about aligning our desires with what is truly good for us, and for the community at large, rather than chasing fleeting pleasures or external validation. In challenging the modern myths of happiness, Stoicism offers a profound counter-narrative that emphasizes inner virtue and wisdom over external success and material possessions. This stoic redefinition of happiness encourages us to question the foundations upon which we've built our understanding of a fulfilling life. Are we truly seeking happiness in ways that align with our deepest values, or are we caught in the pursuit of fleeting pleasures and societal accolades? This introspection, inspired by Stoic philosophy, invites us to explore a more authentic path to contentment, one that is rooted in self-awareness, acceptance, and the pursuit of virtue. It prompts us to consider how our daily choices and attitudes reflect our understanding of happiness and how we might realign these with the stoic principles of wisdom, courage, justice and temperance. By embracing the stoic perspective, we open ourselves to a form of happiness that is not dependent on the external world's unpredictability, but is instead grounded in our own character and the quality of our actions. This approach not only provides a more stable and resilient foundation for happiness, but also enriches our lives with a sense of purpose and meaning that transcends the superficial metrics of success often promoted by society. How can we apply this stoic conception of happiness in our lives? Start by reflecting on your own sources of happiness. Are they external and susceptible to change? Or do they come from a deeper, more stable place within you? Practice gratitude for what you have right now, focus on what you can control, and let go of the rest. This mindset shift is not easy, but it is the key to lasting contentment. We've journeyed through the depths of stoic wisdom, challenging modern myths of happiness, success, and self-improvement. Stoicism isn't just a philosophy, it's a practical guide for living with peace, resilience and contentment in a world that constantly demands more. If you've found value in this exploration, 
I encourage you to join our growing community, share your thoughts, experiences, and how you've applied Stoic principles in your life in the comments below. Your insights not only enrich our discussions, but also help others on their Stoic journey. Don't forget to like this video if it's helped you in any way, and subscribe for more content that aims to enlighten, inspire, and foster a supportive community centered around Stoic wisdom. Together, we're not just learning about Stoicism, we're living it. Deal with stress like a Stoic by clicking the video on the left. Stay Stoic.